Okay, good stuff. Let's move on. We've got this question here from Dead Eyes. Uh, Hardware Unbox demonstrated that in Battlefield 6, while uh, more cores do help, it's nowhere near linear scaling with eight cores barely being 10% faster than six cores. But I'm struggling to make sense of why that's the case. The game seems to similarly saturate both CPUs, so ostensibly the eight core should be outputting 33% more work. Logic would dictate then that the 8-core should be 33% faster than the 6-core. Where is all that extra work disappearing to? Is it just CPU usage reporting not being very accurate? Or is there something else I'm not understanding? Thanks. So, Alex, yeah, this is kind of like, well, it's it's kind of nothing really new, is it? <laughs> um, I mean... Yeah, I mean, there is the sort of, I think Dead Eye's contention here is basically that um, the way games work is that uh, work is allocated to all cores on a similar basis. And mm-hmm. therefore we should be seeing an increase in results in line with the amount of physical resources that are there. Mm-hmm. But that's very rarely the case, even on the best multi-threaded games, right? Yeah. I'm having, I'm struggling to think about any really good examples of it. Um, so the one thing like, yeah, it could be spreading the the load in a better way, but if these, if still the core bottleneck, of a majority of that code is some single threaded thing which is highly likely given the way games work like that is going to be the thing that where most of the frame time is spent there and the excess areas of frame time that could have been spread around that are more multi-threaded that's where you're seeing that extra 10 percent or whatever another area where you'll see it in over long periods of recordings is you could see better frame time stability in those moments uh when things that could overburden a processor with fewer threads um yeah when they come to bear and then the one that has more th- threads available we'll see those frame time spikes maybe being smaller or maybe not apparent but i i'm not actually familiar with this hardware and boxed video completely to s- s- they usually talk about frame times so i, I it, maybe it's in that video i i don't really know um but just a really good example so there is a slight misconception about crisis it does use many cores i just want to bring this up really quickly because um back in the day you could run a game like crisis which was heavily single thread limited just given what everything the game was doing but if you had two cores the game would run a lot better because the few multi-threaded things it did have in there like sound and like I guess physics was on another thread or something like that for some stuff. Um, Maybe particle update for all I know. Uh, Like all those things could add up and slow down if you just were on one core. And if those two cores that you had were also overburdened in one moment, having four cores also could technically help the frame rate out. It's just over time as we've seen games become CPUs getting uh, uh, wider and faster that you don't see like... If, if the single thread thing is the limiting factor, you don't actually get to see the benefit of all the extra cores that are in all the work they're doing. And they could actually be lowering the frame time of a lot of stuff, but it just doesn't matter in the end, right? Because it's all done in parallel. Uh, so uh, in this case, I would say uh, it's not surprising. And I would love to see, like we were talking about earlier with John, like the, 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 the bottleneck in games is software uh, in a lot of ways and how efficient it is. And even the biggest titles that aren't actually being so ambitious this time around in some ways uh, are still technically not getting like pure linear core scaling. Uh, So that's something for the future. Yeah, I think from my perspective, there's potentially a sort of misconception there of how game logic works on a CPU because uh, the concepts that, you know, all cores are sort of equally utilized very rarely happens you typically have like a you know a game thread and a render thread and that kind of dominates proceedings and then supplementary work goes to other threads so that instantly means that you're not going to be getting like complete linear scaling based on the amount of cores there and even in games that don't do that i think alex uh, red engine cyberpunk uh, is is one of those engines that does scale pretty great over more cores but you're still not getting linear scaling there Right. Um, there's also other stuff, of course, like, um, you know, other potential bottlenecks like uh, GPU driver, for example. I mean, back in the day, the classic case was that the DX11 driver on um, AMD wasn't particularly great. And uh, 
uh, was as multi-core aware as the NVIDIA one. These days, it seems to be the case that a lot of focus is now on the uh, CPU overhead on NVIDIA for various reasons. So things sort of change there. But yeah, it's it's basically the case that, you know, you just don't get this sort of perfect scaling of game performance to cores. It just doesn't happen, unfortunately. And to be fair, you don't really get it on GPUs either. You know, this it, you, when you're looking at like the CUDA core counts of like the Blackwell series, um, you're not getting linear scaling of frame rates according to how many CUDA cores there are. So there's, there's a lot going on there.